prematurely, you get an embryo, and after six weeks or more, you get the fetus, and the fetus keeps growing through eyes and nose. Who does all that? That's Krishna's handiwork. Using genetics, of course, and Krishna is the founder, the source of genetics. He's the source of all these things. So, if Krishna is the source of everything, then the true bhakti yogi, he simply does his service. That's uh, okay, in my eyes, thank you. The, the true bhakti yogi, he is simply serving with love in his heart. This is for you, Krishna. I do this for you because I owe you so much. You always give. You gave me my, I just said, gave me my car. I'm healthy. You gave me my health. I'm strong. You gave me my strength. I'm full of vigor. You gave me my vigor. You helped give me my uh, education and my diploma. You gave me the intelligence to be able to pass the examination. Sometimes a person sits there scratching his head. He can't pass the examination. He forgot everything that you studied. Krishna's not giving him the grace. You ever get that? When you sit for five minutes, you wonder, yeah, am I ever going to remember? And if you're not a Krishna devotee, what do you do? You just, you're just practically ready to pull your hair out, run out, and, and just scream. But a devotee just sits there and chants, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Come on, Krishna, I want to pass this exam. I want to do some nice work for you. A lot of times I can't remember things. And, you know, like a verse, I know a lot of verses from this Bhagavad Gita. Uh, and so, I'm thinking of one in connection with a particular action, and I can't remember it. So I said, come on, Krishna, this is your words. Help me out. I need some help. So when I talk like that, I get the help. It usually take two, three seconds, five seconds sometimes, and it comes. But if I just say, what is the verse? What, how does it go? What, why can't I remember it doesn't come. But I said, come on, Krishna, you know more. You spoke it. And then, like a flash, it's right on my head. It's so wonderful. Of course, one may say, is that all you should do? Krishna is your helper. The more you connect with Krishna in a healthy way, you realize how kind he is, how loving he is, how sweet he is, how caring he is, how wonderful he is. So when we have this kind of feeling about Krishna, you want to do things for him, is it not? When you know that Krishna is doing so many, helping you in so many ways, helping you eat food, giving you good digestion, giving you nice clothing, making your car run nicely, uh, making sure you have enough money to get the oil changes and the carburetor changes or whatever. So therefore we, we get a feeling of indebtedness to Krishna. That's good. Because it means your whole day is spent. Yes, whatever I do. It says in the book, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer and give away, whatever austerities you perform, do this as an offering unto whom? Krishna. Krishna, Krishna says me. In this way, <coughs> Let me repeat the verse. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do this as an offering. And this way you, this way you will be able to uh, ultimately come to me because you'll be renouncing everything. You're always giving to me. And what does Krishna owe you? You know what he owes you? You know what he'll give you? Detachment. It's so wonderful to be detached. Let me give you a good example of detachment and attachment <clears throat> and how free it makes us. Let's say I'm attached to chocolate. Anybody here attached to chocolate? You can say it's not a big sin. It's <laughs> a minor sin. Okay, we've got one person attached who at least admits it. So, let's say you have this craving of chocolate. Okay, it tastes good. I'm surprised more aren't attached to chocolate. Nobody here? Just one person? Dark chocolate. Uh, hard chocolate. Dark, dark, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Okay. Dutch type? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like it also. It's very, very tasty. So, so the thing is this, is that you get attached to it. So, ever, my grandmother used to have a candy store. Whenever I used to visit her, which would be, well, when I was really young, my mother would go to work and she'd leave me with my grandmother 
But let me tell you, I went through that store every day. It must have been a pound of chocolate. So I was a fat little, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> then my mother stopped working and she got, she made, she got into the act and she made sure that I ate only a, a, a reasonable amount, which was one piece and that was it. The point I want to make is that when you get a craving, it gets a hold of you and almost you can't stop. You almost feel uncomfortable. No, you almost. You do feel uncomfortable until you satisfy the craving. So what Krishna does when he is helping us, he can gradually take away your craving. And it's slow and gradual. But what happens is that you find that, let's just say you have a craving every day. So that, yeah, the door has to be closed. Thank you. Let us say you have a craving every day. So Krishna, what he does is that he reduces it. And then it's every other day. Then it becomes every three or four days. And then once a week. And once in two weeks. So the result is that you lose the craving. And then if you eat a piece of chocolate, you can take it or leave it. That's what the freedom is. I eat it, I can put it down and not care whether I ever eat it again. I, I was, I, I had this craving. Whenever I would have any kinds of years ago before I could feel the And whenever anybody would say something offensive to me, or say something harsh, or say something obnoxious, or make me feel terrible, I'd have to immediately go get the ice, chocolate ice cream, or chocolate candy <laughs> bar, or whatever. Give him some chocolate. <laughs> Decent. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, anyway, so what, what, what happened, I would have to do that, but then as it became a devotee, that gradually disappeared, I no longer had it, and the result was, I felt so free. So all your cravings, Krishna will take them away, so that you can take it or leave it. You can enjoy it or not enjoy it. You're the master of your body, Master of your senses. And is that a nice feeling to be that you're the master under Krishna's mastership, of course? You don't become a master just on your own. You become a master under the supreme master of the senses, which is Rishikesh or Krishna. Okay? So, well, let's get back to the business. Uh, a little later. <laughs> So, uh, when a person knows the goal of life, but is addicted to the fruits of activities, he is acting in karma yoga, which we all know what is now. And all of us should practice it. Those of you who are householders, of course you're earning money for your family, a certain amount of it must be allotted or apportioned for spiritual or religious activities or charitable activities. Because the money came from Krishna, you have to give it back to him. You don't give it back, you'll start taking it away from you. And you'll find that your job, you, you, you've got a, a, instead of getting a raise at your job, you've got a, a, a demotion in your job. We don't want that happening to anybody. We want everybody going up, up, up the scale. So please, make sure you give back to Krishna. But do it out of love, not because you're going to lose your job. Do it because you owe it to Him. Krishna is peace. Krishna is sweetness. Krishna is love. Krishna is kindness. Krishna is doing everything for you to make you happy. Is, don't we owe something to him for all that? Okay, let's go on with this. Let me just say a prayer just one moment. I should have said it earlier. Om Agyana Shimiranda Syagana Jana Shivaya Chakshu Purvita Yena Kasma Shri Purvita. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes. With the torchlight of knowledge, I want my humble obeisances under the lotus feet of my spiritual master. It is by his grace that I speak. By his grace that I get the grace of Krishna. It is mentioned in this very beautiful song we sing every morning. By the mercy of the spiritual master, one receives the benediction of Krishna. Without the grace of the spiritual master, one cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. Therefore, let me offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master at least three times a day. Okay? So, spiritual master is absolutely essential. 
in order for advancement to take place. Continuing. <clears throat> so, here. When he knows that the goal is Krishna, but he takes pleasure in... <clears throat> Okay, but he takes pleasure in mental speculation in understanding Krishna. He is acting in jnana yoga. I'm not going to go into that. And when he knows the goal and seeks Krishna completely in Krishna consciousness and devotion and service, he is acting in bhakti yoga or buddhi yoga. But <coughs> I've explained bhakti yoga or buddhi yoga already. Now we're going to get examination. Okay, you all ready for the exam? Okay, bhakti yoga.